So uh, to end this set, and then before I do some videos on some more sexy applications of forms, um, where we get really get beyond what we already could do with vector fields and things like that, just another example of why one forms are, are more natural than vector fields um, for for what we're doing. There's there's still uses of vector fields definitely, um, in particular for integration. So the claim is that we're actually we've actually been integrating one forms all along, and so the simplest thing is that. If you're taking a calculus class, you're not going to get full credit for writing an expression like that. Let me switch that black, as usual, is not doing too well. You're only going to get full credit if you write a dx there. Why is that? Why are teachers so, such sticklers about that? Well, one explanation is that it comes from a Riemann sum, height, sum of height times width, when we look at the rectangle method, or the Riemann sum for, uh, for an area that it's height times width. And maybe it's just nostalgia that makes us include there as a reminder. That'd be a pretty terrible reason. Um, a physics reason would be um, units, dimensional analysis. And that's actually a pretty good reason. And it's actually sort of the physics version of what I'm going to be saying uh, throughout the problem here. Um, if you have integral a to b, for example, of velocity, um, that is the displacement. This is one of the versions of the fundamental theorem of calculus. This is, in fact, how uh, I have my students discover the fundamental theorem, um, that integrating velocities gives me displacement. And so this is in, like, meters. It's a length measurement. And it would be really weird if just adding, that's just, this is just an overgrown sigma, sum of meters per second would somehow give meters? Where'd this, how'd the seconds cancel? Oh, OK dt, a little bit of time, it's not just some formal gadget. It actually has units with it. That's the seconds, and those cancel out, and it gives you the equality. And any time a physicist says, hey, it's because the units have to match up, a uh, mathematician would often say, OK, that's because there's some sort of change of variables that you could do, which amounts to the physicist's change of units, that it needs to, it needs to work in all units. The mathematician says it needs to be invariant under change of variables. Okay, so speaking of which, take a look at part B there. Pause the video if you want to do this yourself, just like in previous. Okay, and um, a student tries to integrate, and they're very careful about change of variables, atypically careful, except for one thing. They've got this integral, and I'm putting explicitly in x equals to x equals. P people don't usually do that. And we're going to use a change of variables. Oh, yeah, let's look, use u equals x over 2 as our change of variables. Okay then u is going to go from 0 to pi over 2, because u is just x over 2. So at least they remember to change the limits. That's crucial. And then they put in sine of u. All things, it's, it's good. OK, now that's something we know the antiderivative of. It's minus cosine u from 0 to pi over 2. That's 0 minus a minus 1, because of this minus sign, is 1. That's the wrong answer. And hopefully, um, you know, my, what I was saying in the previous part makes it pretty obvious. What's, what we're forgetting is the dx. There really needed to be a dx here, and we needed the relationship between um, dx and du. Huh, that's interesting. That's exactly what I would get if I looked at this in terms of this sophisticated differential forms language. u is 1 half x. What's its d? What's d of it? Remember, that's just the derivative of this times dx. Well, that's exactly just the usual differential notation um, in one variable. That really is differential forms. Whenever you were doing these calculations, you were doing differential forms um, without just sort of calling it that in a fancy language. And they were always one forms in one dimension, but still, it's differential forms. OK, so dx gets replaced by 2du. And now I actually get the right answer. 2 times this. It actually is equal to 2 if you calculate it out correctly. Okay. So um, notice that the process here is you can really think of it as um, you could think of this as the as the doubling map. u equals x over 2 or x equals 2u. This is that transformation t, but just the one variable version of it that we were doing before. So like with one, 1 on the real line gets sent off to 2. And I'm really just 
doing this, I'm saying let's integrate this function dx, f of x dx, and that integral over, let's say, this um, 0 to pi in x land, let's call that interval i, is the integral over j, that's 0 to pi over 2, let's call that the corresponding interval here, of t upper star of f of x dx. Oh, I, I drew that in to make sure, I'm trying to make sure, oh, let's see. I'll tell you what, I'll just erase this. The fancy way to say it is the integral over i, which is 0 to pi, of this differential form is the integral over this new corresponding interval of t upper star f of x dx. And if you actually calculate that out, it tells you to do exactly what we're used to. Change the interval, change the function by composing, and that's what changed it to assign u, and then um, dx is equal to 2 du, it changes into 2 du. It's, we would now say t star of dx is 2, 2 du. So here we kind of just said they were equal. A little more sophisticated way is think of it as a, a real transformation between two universes that changes the variables, and we would say t star of dx is equal to t, 2 du. We need that kind of sophistication when we get to more than just one variable uh, running around. We never had to do that in BC, but that's really what's going on. And then at the end here, I say, here's a claim. You can't integrate a function. You can only integrate a differential form. You have to have this together with this. And because change of variables is such a crucial tool, it's really the combination that we've been, been integrating all along. It's not just, here's you integrate a function, and here's something auxiliary that's attached to the integral that you have to do to make the integral work. The really, the more sophisticated way, the better way to think about it, is it's your, you've been integrating this package all along, f of x dx. That's the kind of thing you can actually integrate and works with change of variables, which is our most fundamental technique of integration, even from the, from the very start. Um, another way to say it is back to our pictorial version, which is we could actually um, draw the one form. We could draw a sine of you know, x over 2 dx as a one form by drawing the level sets of sine x over 2. Um, and that's going to be, uh, the level sets are going to come up at uh, like pi, so it's 0 here, so there's a, there's a level set. And 1, 2, 3, pi over 2, there's a level set, there's a level set. I really am integrating this form. And the integral of this guy, oh, and this, so this is like 0, 1, 0, minus 1. So the, the, the orientations kind of keep switching. OK. Uh, actually, no, it's like, sort of like that. Anyway, um, and so what we're really doing is we're taking an interval and thinking how many of those rows of sine are we crossing. Um, and that's really the, the picture that we've got. The reason I bring this picture in is that, again, these bars carry their own scale with them. And I don't, really, I don't even really need to have these numbers for whether it's x or u. I just need to know how many bars do I cross and in what direction. The, the, the signs get a little funky for this one. Um, so you need to have something that carries its own scale, as I said before. And that's one of the things that a differential form does automatically.